Question 1. When designing a network, what are the key principles of hierarchical network design? A. Horizontal scaling, flat network topology, minimal redundancy, centralized control. B. Vertical scaling, star network topology, maximum redundancy, distributed control. C. Horizontal scaling, hierarchical network topology, maximum redundancy, distributed control. D. Vertical scaling, hierarchical network topology, minimal redundancy, centralized control. The correct answer is C. Horizontal scaling, hierarchical network topology, maximum redundancy, distributed control. Explanation. Hierarchical network design is crucial for ensuring scalability, resiliency, and efficient management of networks. In this design approach, the network is organized into distinct layers, each serving a specific purpose. Horizontal scaling involves adding more devices or resources within each layer to handle increased demand without impacting performance. Question 2. What is a key characteristic of a scalable network design? A. Static addressing scheme. B. Single point of failure. C. Limited bandwidth capacity. D. Ability to accommodate growth. The correct answer is D. Ability to accommodate growth. Explanation. Scalability is a critical aspect of network design, especially in dynamic environments where the demand for resources may vary over time. A scalable network design should possess the ability to accommodate growth without significant architectural changes or performance degradation. Question 3. In modular network design, what is the primary advantage of using modular components? A. Reduced scalability. B. Limited flexibility. C. Enhanced troubleshooting. D. Decreased resiliency. The correct answer is C. Enhanced troubleshooting. Explanation. Modular network design emphasizes the use of interchangeable, self-contained modules or components within the network architecture. This approach offers several benefits, including enhanced troubleshooting capabilities. By compartmentalizing network functions into modular units, it becomes easier to isolate and diagnose issues within specific modules without affecting the entire network. Question 4. How does resiliency contribute to network reliability? A. By introducing single points of failure. B. By reducing redundancy. C. By improving fault tolerance. D. By limiting scalability. The correct answer is C. By improving fault tolerance. Explanation. Resiliency is essential for ensuring network reliability and continuity, particularly in the face of disruptive events or failures. A resilient network design incorporates redundancy, fault tolerance mechanisms, and rapid recovery protocols to minimize downtime and maintain service availability. Question 5. What role does the access layer play in hierarchical network design? A. Provides connectivity to end devices. B. Performs core routing functions. C. Manages network traffic between different domains. D. Facilitates communication between distribution and core layers. The correct answer is A. Provides connectivity to end devices. Explanation. In hierarchical network design, the access layer serves as the entry point for end devices, providing connectivity to users and peripherals. This layer is responsible for authenticating and authorizing devices, enforcing security policies, and facilitating data transmission between end hosts and the rest of the network infrastructure. Question 6. When designing a LAN network, what is the primary advantage of using VLANs, virtual local area networks? A. Increased broadcast domain size. B. Enhanced network security. C. Simplified network management. D. Reduced scalability concerns. The correct answer is B. Enhanced network security. Explanation. VLANs provide a means of logically segmenting a physical LAN into multiple virtual LANs, 
each functioning as a separate broadcast domain. One of the key advantages of VLAN implementation is enhanced network security. By grouping devices based on logical criteria rather than physical location, VLANs enable finer control over network access and traffic flow. Question 7. When designing a WAN network, what technology can be utilized to optimize bandwidth utilization and improve network performance for data replication between geographically dispersed sites? A. MPLS. Multi-protocol label switching. B. DHCP. Dynamic host configuration protocol. C. NAT. Network address translation. D. VLAN. Virtual local area network. The correct answer is A. MPLS, multi-protocol label switching. Explanation. MPLS is a widely adopted technology used in WAN network design to enhance performance and efficiency, particularly for data replication and inter-site communication. MPLS enables the creation of virtual private networks, VPNs, over service provider networks, allowing organizations to prioritize traffic, optimize routing paths, and ensure reliable data delivery between geographically dispersed sites. Question 8. In data center network design, what is a key consideration for ensuring high availability and fault tolerance? A. Implementing a flat network architecture. B. Deploying a single point of failure. C. Utilizing redundant power supplies and network paths. D. Minimizing scalability options. The correct answer is C. Utilizing redundant power supplies and network paths. Explanation. High availability and fault tolerance are critical requirements in data center network design to ensure uninterrupted operation and minimal downtime. One key consideration for achieving these objectives is the utilization of redundant power supplies and network paths. Redundant power supplies ensure continuous operation in the event of a power failure by automatically switching to backup power sources. Question 9. When designing a LAN network, what role do Cisco Catalyst switches play in ensuring scalability and performance? A. Providing core routing functions. B. Segmenting the network into VLANs. C. Aggregating access layer connections. D. Implementing MPLS for WAN connectivity. The correct answer is C. Aggregating access layer connections. Explanation. Cisco Catalyst switches are commonly used in LAN network design to facilitate connectivity and enhance performance. One of the key roles of Catalyst switches is aggregating access layer connections, particularly in large-scale deployments. By connecting multiple access switches to a Catalyst switch at the distribution layer, organizations can consolidate network traffic, improve bandwidth utilization, and simplify management. Question 10. In WAN network design, what technology can be employed to optimize bandwidth utilization and improve application performance by caching frequently accessed content closer to end users? A. GRE. Generic Routing Encapsulation. B. IPSIC. Internet Protocol Security. C. BGP. Border Gateway Protocol. D. CDN. Content Delivery Network. The correct answer is D, CDN, Content Delivery Network. Explanation. Content Delivery Networks, CDNs, are a critical component of WAN network design aimed at enhancing application performance and optimizing bandwidth utilization. CDNs consist of distributed servers strategically placed at multiple locations worldwide to cache and deliver content closer to end users. Question 11. Which of the following statements accurately describes the protocol independent multicast, sparse mode, PIMSM, protocol? A. PIMSM requires explicit configuration of multicast source and receiver information. B. PIMSM relies on shared trees to forward multicast traffic initially. C. PIMSM uses a push model for distributing multicast data. D. PIM-SM is designed primarily for dense multicast environments. The correct answer is B. 
PIM SM relies on shared trees to forward multicast traffic initially. Explanation PIM SM is a protocol independent multicast routing protocol primarily used in sparse mode multicast environments. In PIM SM, routers build shared trees rooted at a designated router known as the rendezvous point, RP. Initially, multicast traffic is forwarded along these shared trees until source specific trees are built, if necessary to optimize the path between sources and receivers. Question 12. When designing a network security architecture, what is the primary purpose of implementing access control lists, ACLs? A. To encrypt data transmission between network devices. B. To authenticate users accessing the network. C. To control traffic flow based on predefined rules. D to monitor network performance and bandwidth usage. The correct answer is C, to control traffic flow based on predefined rules. Explanation. Access control lists, ACLs, are a fundamental component of network security design, used to enforce traffic policies and control the flow of packets within a network. By defining rules based on criteria such as source and destination IP addresses, protocols, and ports, ACLs allow administrators to permit or deny traffic according to specific requirements or security policies. Question 13. When designing network security, what is the purpose of deploying a stateful firewall compared to a stateless firewall? A. Stateful firewall can inspect and track the state of connections. B. Stateless firewall offers faster packet processing. C. Stateless firewall supports advanced application layer protocols. D. Stateful firewall provides more flexible rule configuration. The correct answer is A. Stateful firewall can inspect and track the state of connections. Explanation. Stateful firewalls maintain awareness of the state of active network connections, allowing them to make context-aware decisions based on the connection's state and history. Unlike stateless firewalls, which evaluate individual packets based on predefined rules, stateful firewalls track the state of connections and enforce policies based on the connection's context, including source and destination addresses, ports, and sequence numbers. Question 14. In an IP multicast network, what is the purpose of the Internet Group Management Protocol, IGMP? A. To manage the distribution of multicast traffic within a LAN segment. B. To facilitate communication between multicast routers for the establishment of shared trees. C. To enable hosts to signal their interest in receiving multicast traffic for specific multicast groups. D. To maintain a multicast routing table and compute optimal multicast forwarding paths. The correct answer is C to enable hosts to signal their interest in receiving multicast traffic for specific multicast groups. Explanation. IGMP is a protocol used by hosts and multicast routers to establish multicast group memberships on a LAN segment. When a host wants to receive traffic for a particular multicast group, it sends IGMP membership reports to its local multicast router, indicating its interest in that group. Question 15. In network security design, what technology is commonly used to establish secure remote access connections for remote users or branch offices? A. SSL, Secure Sockets Layer. B. IPSEC, Internet Protocol Security. C. GRE, Generic Routing Encapsulation. D. NAT, Network Address Translation. The correct answer is B. IPSEC, Internet Protocol Security. Explanation. IPSEC, Internet Protocol Security, is a widely adopted technology for establishing secure virtual private network, VPN, connections over public networks such as the Internet. IPSEC provides authentication, encryption, and data integrity verification to ensure confidentiality and integrity of transmitted data between remote endpoints. Question 16. A network engineer is designing an IP multicast network and needs to select a multicast routing protocol. Which of the following is a characteristic of protocol-independent multicast, dense mode, PIM-DM? A. 
PIM DM constructs shared trees rooted at a designated rendezvous point, RP. B. PIM DM requires explicit configuration of multicast source and receiver information. C. PIM DM floods multicast traffic across the entire multicast domain initially. D. PIM DM uses a pull model for distributing multicast data. The correct answer is C. PIM DM floods multicast traffic across the entire multicast domain initially. Explanation PIM DM is a multicast routing protocol primarily used in dense mode multicast environments. In PIM DM, multicast traffic is initially flooded across the entire multicast domain and pruned back as receivers express their interest in receiving traffic for specific multicast groups. This flood and prune behavior makes PIM DM less suitable for large scale multicast deployments due to potential inefficiencies and scalability concerns. Question 17. In network security design, what is the primary purpose of implementing a demilitarized zone, DMZ, within the network architecture? A. To segregate and protect internal network resources from external threats. B. To provide secure remote access for authorized users. C. To enforce access control policies for internal users. D. To optimize network performance and reduce latency. The correct answer is A. To segregate and protect internal network resources from external threats. Explanation. A demilitarized zone, DMZ, is a network segment that serves as a buffer zone between the internal network and external untrusted networks, such as the Internet. The primary purpose of implementing a DMZ within the network architecture is to segregate and protect internal network resources, such as servers hosting public-facing services, e.g., web servers, email servers, from direct exposure to external threats. Question 18. In network security design, what is the purpose of deploying intrusion detection and prevention systems, IDPS? A. To encrypt sensitive data during transmission. B. To authenticate users accessing network resources. C. To monitor network traffic for suspicious activities and threats. D. To optimize routing and packet forwarding. The correct answer is C. To monitor network traffic for suspicious activities and threats. Explanation. Intrusion detection and prevention systems, IDPS, are security appliances or software solutions designed to monitor network traffic in real time, analyze it for signs of suspicious activities or potential security breaches, and take appropriate action to prevent or mitigate threats. Question 19. What is the primary function of a rendezvous point, RP, in protocol independent multicast, sparse mode, PIM SM? A. To maintain a multicast routing table and compute optimal multicast forwarding paths. B. To flood multicast traffic across the entire multicast domain initially. C. To facilitate communication between multicast routers for the establishment of shared trees. D. To serve as the root of shared trees for multicast groups without an active source. The correct answer is C. To serve as the root of shared trees for multicast groups without an active source. Explanation. In PIM SM, the rendezvous point, RP, serves as the root of shared trees for multicast groups without an active source. When there is no active source for a multicast group, receivers join the shared tree rooted at the RP to receive traffic for that group. Question 20. Mr. Thompson is configuring multicast routing on a Cisco router. He wants to ensure that multicast traffic is forwarded only to segments with interested receivers. Which protocol should Mr. Thompson enable on the router to achieve this goal? A. OSPF. Open shortest path first. B. BGP. Border gateway protocol. C. PIM. Protocol independent multicast. D. EIGRP. Enhanced interior gateway routing protocol. The correct answer is C, PIM, Protocol Independent Multicast. Explanation. To ensure that multicast traffic is forwarded only to segments with interested receivers, 
Mr. Thompson should enable protocol independent multicast, PIM, on the router. PIM is the standard multicast routing protocol used to establish multicast distribution trees and manage multicast traffic forwarding in IP networks. OSPF, BGP, and EIGRP are all unicast routing protocols and do not handle multicast traffic forwarding in the manner described. Question 21. In quality of service, COS, design, what is the primary purpose of implementing traffic policing mechanisms? A. To prioritize certain types of traffic over others. B. To limit the rate of traffic flows to conform to specified rates. C. To allocate available bandwidth based on application requirements. D. To dynamically adjust queue lengths based on network congestion. The correct answer is B. To limit the rate of traffic flows to conform to specified rates. Explanation. Traffic policing is a COS mechanism used to control and enforce traffic rates within a network by limiting the rate of traffic flows to conform to predefined parameters. This helps prevent network congestion, ensure fair resource allocation, and maintain service quality for different types of traffic. Question 22. When designing quality of service COS, policies for voice traffic, which COS mechanism is commonly used to ensure low latency and jitter? A. Class-based queuing, CBQ, B. Weighted fair queuing, WFQ, C. Traffic shaping. D. Expedited forwarding, EF. The correct answer is D. Expedited forwarding, EF. Explanation. Expedited forwarding, EF, is a COS mechanism that provides a dedicated forwarding class for voice and other latency-sensitive traffic, ensuring low latency, minimal jitter, and high priority delivery. EF is commonly used to implement COS policies for voice traffic in networks where timely and predictable delivery of voice packets is critical, such as VoIP, voice over IP, deployments. Question 23. A company is planning to implement VLANs to segment its network for better traffic management and security. Which of the following options best describes a benefit of using VLANs in a network environment? A. VLANs increase the bandwidth of network links by aggregating multiple physical interfaces into a logical link. B. VLANs allow the creation of multiple subnets within the same physical network, enhancing network scalability. C. VLANs reduce broadcast traffic by confining broadcast domains to specific VLANs. D. VLANs improve network reliability by providing redundant paths for data transmission. The correct answer is C. VLANs reduce broadcast traffic by confining broadcast domains to specific VLANs. Explanation. VLANs, virtual local area networks, are used to logically segment a physical network into multiple broadcast domains. By confining broadcast traffic within specific VLANs, the overall broadcast domain is reduced, which helps in decreasing network congestion and improving network performance and security. Question 24. In a large enterprise network, the design team is considering implementing virtual routing and forwarding VRF, instances to achieve network virtualization. Which of the following statements best describes the purpose of VRF instances? A. VRF instances allow sharing of routing tables between different VLANs. B. VRF instances enable the creation of multiple virtual routers on a single physical router. C. VRF instances provide a way to segment the network into virtual LANs for enhanced security. D. VRF instances ensure redundancy by creating virtual backups of routing protocols. The correct answer is B. VRF instances enable the creation of multiple virtual routers on a single physical router. Explanation. VRF instances, also known as VPN routing and forwarding instances, allow multiple instances of a routing table to coexist within the same router at the same time. Each VRF instance maintains its own routing information and forwarding tables, effectively creating separate virtual routers within a single physical router. Question 25. 
When designing COS policies for data traffic, which COS mechanism can be used to prioritize mission-critical applications over less important traffic? A. Class-based marking, CBM, B. Traffic shaping. C. Weighted random early detection, WRED, D. Differentiated services code point, DSCP. The correct answer is D. Differentiated Services Code Point, DSCP. Explanation. Differentiated Services Code Point, DSCP, is a COS mechanism that enables the classification and prioritization of traffic based on its relative importance or service level requirements. With DSCP, packets are marked with specific code points in their IP headers, indicating their priority or treatment within the network. Question 26. In COS design, what is the purpose of traffic shaping? A. To prioritize certain types of traffic over others. B. To limit the rate of traffic flows to conform to specified rates. C. To allocate available bandwidth based on application requirements. D. To dynamically adjust queue lengths based on network congestion. The correct answer is B to limit the rate of traffic flows to conform to specified rates. Explanation. Traffic shaping is a COS mechanism used to control the flow of traffic by smoothing traffic bursts and limiting the rate of traffic flows to conform to predefined bandwidth constraints. By buffering packets during periods of high traffic and releasing them at a controlled rate, traffic shaping helps prevent congestion and ensures that traffic adheres to specified rate limits, reducing the risk of packet loss and delay. Question 27. In data center design, what role does data center interconnect DCI, technology play in facilitating workload mobility and disaster recovery? A. It enables efficient data replication between geographically dispersed data centers. B. It optimizes traffic routing within the local data center network. C. It secures network communication between virtual machines, VMs, D. It accelerates storage access for high-performance applications. The correct answer is A. It enables efficient data replication between geographically dispersed data centers. Explanation. Data Center Interconnect DCI, technology enables efficient and secure communication between geographically dispersed data centers, facilitating workload mobility, disaster recovery, and business continuity. DCI solutions utilize high-speed connectivity, such as dedicated fiber links or MPLS networks, to replicate data, applications, and services across multiple data center locations. Question 28. When designing a data center network, what is the primary purpose of implementing Cisco Nexus switches? A. To optimize network performance for storage access. B. To facilitate server virtualization and consolidation. C. To provide scalable and resilient switching infrastructure. D. To enhance network security through access control and segmentation. The correct answer is C. To provide scalable and resilient switching infrastructure. Explanation. Cisco Nexus switches are purpose-built for data center environments, offering high-performance, scalable, and resilient switching infrastructure to support mission-critical applications, server virtualization, and storage access. Nexus switches feature advanced capabilities such as virtual device contexts, VDCs, fabric path, and virtual port channels, VPCs, designed to meet the unique requirements of modern data center architectures. Question 29. An organization is planning to deploy a virtualized network infrastructure using VLANs. Which of the following options best describes a characteristic of VLANs? A. VLANs extend across multiple physical switches, enabling seamless communication between different VLANs. B. VLANs are implemented at Layer 3 of the OSI model, allowing for routing between different VLANs within the same subnet. C. VLANs require separate physical network infrastructure for each virtual LAN, increasing network complexity and cost. D. VLANs provide logical segmentation of a single physical network into multiple broadcast domains. 
The correct answer is D. VLANs provide logical segmentation of a single physical network into multiple broadcast domains. Explanation VLANs allow network administrators to logically segment a single physical network into multiple virtual broadcast domains. This segmentation enhances network security, reduces broadcast traffic, and facilitates better traffic management by isolating traffic within each VLAN. Question 30. In data center design, what is a key advantage of implementing virtual port channels, VPCs, on Cisco Nexus switches? A. Enhanced network security through port authentication and access control. B. Increased network performance through link aggregation and load balancing. C. Improved network scalability by virtualizing multiple physical switches. D. Simplified network management through centralized configuration and monitoring. The correct answer is B. Increased network performance through link aggregation and load balancing. Explanation. Virtual port channels, VPCs, are a technology used in data center design to enable link aggregation and provide redundancy without the limitations of spanning tree protocols, STP. By allowing a device to connect to two separate Nexus switches as if they were a single logical switch, VPCs provide enhanced network performance through increased bandwidth and improved load balancing across multiple links.